it's like crying of the dying retina which is asking for more blood more nutrition one is called vascular endothelial growth factor it was called that because it was causing vessels to grow hello and welcome to medicine apps where we bring you insightful conversation with leading experts in the medical field i'm your host dr smarika bhat and today we have our exceptional guest with us dr arvind singh Dr. Anvind Singh is a renowned ophthalmologist and one of the leading voices in eye care with over 35 years of ophthalmic surgical practices. He has been called and associated with Royal College Physician Surgeons of Glasgow and International Council of Ophthalmology. Currently he is using AI algorithm for interrupting images for the purpose of screening for early detection of diabetic retinopathy, cervical cancer and functional MRI images. Welcome Dr. Arvind Singh. Thank you. We'll start with our first question that is what is a diabetic retinopathy and why should aspiring students and practicing physician uh, understand it's important in clinical practices. Diabetic retinopathy is becoming more significant as more and more people are diagnosed as diabetic around the world. And one of the advantages of early detection of diabetic retinopathy is eminently treatable. If it's not treated, diabetic retinopathy can lead to complications and blindness. If we can treat it early, diagnose and treat it early through means of screening, even among people who have no symptoms of uh, no visual symptoms, we can save the person from going blind and preserve their vision in the long term. That is the biggest challenge, but that is the advantage of early screening, diagnosis and treatment of diabetic retinopathy. that is a very well put together explanation so now we will go to simplifying the signs can you simplify the pathology and physiology of diabetic retinopathy for us especially how does chronic hyperglycemia leads to retinal damage the basic pathology in diabetes is microangiopathy wherever there are small blood vessels their blockage and leakage will cause problems in diabetes this is, happens in the retina it happens in the heart it happens in the kidney it happens in the nerves because the fine blood vessels that supply the nerve when they suffer damage due to diabetic disease then you get diabetic neuropathy you get hand and glove uh, loss of sensation so in diabetes as a microangiopathy we see the changes in small blood vessel resulting in complications of diabetes and the two things that happen the small blood vessels are a three layered structure there is endothelium on the inside there is a uh, pericytes on the outside and there is a basement membrane in the middle due to diabetes the endothelial cells start proliferating causing blockages of the blood vessel the pericytes start dropping out reducing the support and therefore there's more leakage so two primary changes in small blood vessels one is the obstruction therefore the blood doesn't reach the areas where it's supposed to reach and the other increased permeability and therefore there's leakage from the blood vessel that is the basic pathology in diabetes and all the damage that occurs in tissues in diabetes is because of these two primary changes okay uh, thank you for explaining on the deeper cellular level so moving on to the next question uh, what's the key difference between non proliferative or diabetic retinopathy and uh, proliferative diabetic retinopathy if you broadly classify diabetic retinopathy it is background pre proliferative and proliferative the background diabetic retinopathy is otherwise known as non proliferative because what you see is the changes directly due to leakage and blockage of the fine uh, capillaries but when as we go on beyond that when this le- uh, leakage is there it leaks into the areas of retina for example macular uh, area causing blurred vision but the blockage of capillaries stops the blood from reaching parts of the retina which has a very high oxygen requirement and therefore those areas become ischemic or non perfused that's why it's called non proliferative because non perfusion leads to the problems of proliferation it's like 
crying of the dying retina which is asking for more blood more nutrition and during this course of crying the body produces new blood vessels in the retina which being produced in a hurry tend to be poorly supported increasing leaking and also prone to breaking and causing hemorrhages so that is the problem with diabetes which goes from non proliferative through pre proliferative to proliferative uh thank you dr avin for perfectly explaining the npdr and pdr differences so let's move on to clinical findings can you describe the hallmark fundoscoping findings at each stage of diabetic retinopathy in background retinopathy even though the patient is asymptomatic and there are no visual changes when you examine the patient you can see tiny malformations of blood vessels which is known as intraretinal uh, microvascular abnormalities because it's within the retina the blood vessels form little aneurysms where it is out pouching from the vessel wall so you see micro aneurysms you see exudates because wherever there has been a leakage after the fluid has been absorbed we are left with hard protein and those hard protein in the retina appear as exudates also there are soft spots which used to be known as micro uh, which used to be known as cotton wool uh, exudates which are not actually these are now micro infarcts because the blood vessel being blocked causes the area of ischemia to go white as we know protein when it's denatured by either heat or anything else becomes opaque so if we have a clear egg the yellow part of the egg once we not the yellow the white part of the egg which is clear protein if you put it in a frying pan it becomes white as a fried egg looks like and that is because protein damaged by heat in this case uh, but in the eye the protein is damaged by reduced blood supply in ischemia so these little fluffy spots that occur are micro infarcts that is where the retina is not functioning and that is where you see it as a uh, fluffy spot so the main changes you see in background retinopathy are micro aneurysms areas mm-hmm. of leakage which cause hemorrhage exudates and cotton wool spots okay so as you have touched a uh, micro aneurysm topic so can you help us understand deeper on what is micro uh, aneurysm and why they are considered the earliest clinical signs of diabetic retinopathy so that our audience get a clear understanding of it well we discussed earlier the weakness of the wall of the small blood vessels so when the inside the blood pressure inside pushes part of the wall out we get a small aneurysm and uh, in in any system if you imagine a tennis ball attached to a, a stick if you look at it from the ball side all you'll see is a circular tennis ball if you look at it from the side you'll see the stick attached to it so in a micro aneurysm if you see it end on you see a circle with just the aneurysm like a tiny balloon and if you could see it from the side you can actually see the place where it's bulging out from the blood vessel so you see these dots as micro aneurysms and uh, once this micro aneurysm has leaked further you see hemorrhages and because hemorrhages track along the nerve fiber layer you see hemorrhages that are like little uh, areas of smudging you can have whole blood you can have just fluid leaking and uh, you you can have uh, old uh um, leakage which when absorbed gives rise to hard exudates so when you look it with an ophthalmoscope you can see these uh, features but if you do a fluorescein angiogram which we do where we inject a dye which glows in blue light you can actually see areas where the blood is not reaching those appear as pale areas and uh, the next stage which is a proliferation is at the interface of the perfused area and non perfused area okay that was such a vivid description of uh, words so let's move on to our next question what role do biochemical pathways such as vgf activation oxidative stress and inflammation plays in the progression from npdr to pdr the basic problem we discussed earlier in diabetes is a lack of perfusion and also ischemia in certain parts of the tissues 
these tissues respond by producing certain biochemical factors which are beginning to be identified which results in the complications like proliferation and others and there are several pathways what people try and do is they try and gather experimental evidence to see what actually is the result and then we look at what connects the two so we have uh, two of the main factors which are there one is called vascular endothelial growth factor it was called that because it was causing vessels to grow and uh, it was also found that if we obstruct vascular endothelial growth factor then we can actually cause the blood vessels to regress in my initial research i lasered the eyes of pigs one eye of every pig and when we took the vitreous from the lasered eye and compared it with the vitreous of the unlasered eye we found that the lasered eye caused the blood vessels to regress or endothelial cells to die off which meant there was something present in the laser retina that was opposing what was happening before and causing blood vessels to go away with that further research it found that there are growth factors there are protein kinase c there is vascular endothelial growth factor in addition to these growth factors there is also an element of inflammation and inflammatory products as we know from inflammation in the skin and elsewhere causes increased leakage from blood vessels the inflammatory products cause blood fluid to leak under the in the retina and gives rise to macular edema so when we look at diabetic retinopathy it's background retinopathy pre proliferative retinopathy and proliferative retinopathy with or without macular edema macular edema can occur at any of the stages and is the major cause for loss of central vision the reading vision or uh, driving vision okay thank you for explaining the progression from pdr to ptr so we'll wrapping our uh, podcast with one last question why is early detection of diabetic retinopathy critical and what are the potential outcomes if it is missed diabetic retinopathy can be detected by ophthalmoscopic examination as well as fluorescein angiogram in a stage before it has gone on to proliferation the most significant part is when a patient is diagnosed as diabetic we don't know how long they have been diabetic for before they are diagnosed the most significant factor in diabetes with regards to complication is the duration a lot of people feel that it's the control of diabetes now control of diabetes is less important than the duration somebody who's had a diabetes for 20 years is more likely to suffer complications somebody who's had it for 5 years so from the time diagnosis is made if we continue to screen the patient we can actually prevent the proliferation by treating the patient with 632 nanometer laser so blue green laser and that burn, making spots on the retina with this laser causes the balance to be shifted from pre proliferation to regression of the blood vessels and that is and it still remains the most effective treatment for for non proliferative diabetic retinopathy to keep it from going on to proliferation so the significance comes from the fact that if we were able to diagnose early all the diabetics and treat them we could prevent them from going blind oh thank you so much dr singh for such an enlightening uh, discussion with us your insights were truly incredibly valuable for a healthcare professionals thank you smarika and thank you to our viewers for tuning in and remember if you are a healthcare professional who is eager to delve deeper into medical topics or have questions do not hesitate to join us on the medsynapse platform medsynapse platform is not just a resource it's a dynamic space where we are connected with our medical peers participate in meaningful discussions and contribute to the ongoing evolution of healthcare so until next time stay healthy Thank you.